Hello guys and welcome to this second workshop tutorial stuff like that. We'll go over shading, lighting, camera stuff and let's just jump into it. So first of all I exported the file from Fusion. So let's get the file in here. Something like that. Let's transform it to make it a little, little bit smaller. Let's rotate it. So we will get something like this. Let's get a null here and let's call this out underscore object. Something like that. And let's get a material. So this is for redshift here, but it also applies on other render engines, for example Octane, Renderman, Arnold and so on, because I think that's basic stuff and applies on the other engines too. So let's call this mad object. Cool. So now we placed this object here. Let's get to the other stuff. So let's name this here quickly object 001. Let's get a null here to transform the object a little bit. Let's call this transform. Transform and let's hit the enter key. And let's press 1, 2, 3 and 4, so you can go in the different viewports here. So let's get this right to 0, right about here. That's pretty cool. So let's get Redshift started. So let's get a shop network for the materials. Let's get this Redshift. And let's get a rub network for the rendering settings. Let's color this both red. Let's dive inside a redshift and let's make two redshift networks. Let's call the one first mat object object. And the other one let's call it mat BG for background. We will deal with that later. Let's for now jump into the ROP network here and let's place a redshift custom. Let's color this in red also and let's call this red shift um, output mid samples, so a medium sample rate. And let's deal with the samples a little bit, so go to redshift, let's fire the max samples a little bit up. Let's go down with the adaptive error threshold a little bit. And for the secondary samples let's take these all to 265 something like that. And let's for the end here let's go to global illumination go to brute force and brute force. Let's fire that up. Also, let's jump out with you. So you can jump out into the networks with you and I, or you can just use this button here. So these little arrows here. So we've set it up our object and we set it up our redshift stuff. So for now, let's place a grid here. So we need a background, so let's call this BG001 for the background. Let's make this something like that here and also round. So I think uh, when you color in your stuff it's pretty easy to, to handle larger projects because um, it's good organized because of the color 
and you can just use your own color so that's just my personal preference let's get another material node and let's call this matte bg for background so for example objects are black redshift stuff is red octane stuff is also red <laughs> and light is yellow and so on and so on so now we need light in the scene so there are different ways of lighting so you can light with a dome you can light with uh, simple uh, pla planar lights, circle lights, something like that make your own light setup, we will do that later but for now we will stick with a dome light so let's go here press tab and go RS light dome let's color this in yellow and let's call it RS um, HDRI so a high dynamic range image and call it 001 so let's move it here let's go to shader and let's use an HDRI so something like let's show the images here if you don't have an HDRI I will show you in just a few seconds where you can get them let's use let's use this one here and when you go to the normal lighting tab so the headlight only will disable the preview of the HDI so go to normal lighting and you can already see the HDI here in action so we got a harsh light here with harder shadows and we've got a big softbox right here for example let's zoom back in and for now let's just get to this side here it's HDI Haven and the cool thing is it's 100% free and you will get really high quality HDRIs so just browse them and look for something you like the cool thing is you got outdoor HDRIs someone are indoor so for maybe an industrial scene you will consider something like that an old depot or this is pretty nice the auto shop zero one for studio setups you will get something like this here and another cool thing is the temperature so with this uh, circus area you will get a, a really warm and a cold scene because of this light here let me find another example so uh, something like that that's pretty warm too because of these lights or this one here this one here and you can find here HDRs you like pretty nice and just download them in what error resolution you need to so 4k is pretty good but if you want to get higher you can also download 8k resolution or 16k resolution or some HDRIs are backplates that's pretty nice too so look for them out if you want to use backplates so let's close this so we have started with the HDRI here but now we need a camera so let's go to here and press new camera and you will get already a camera with the view but you can also go here and just tap camera and you will get a camera with the centered view and you can then move the camera around just like here let's go into the camera so press cam and lock the camera so you can move the camera around here so first this decision here light so a studio setup for maybe a product shot second decision the camera and the focal length so for industrial stuff I personally like to use uh, longer focal lengths so something like 85 millimeters or even 90 millimeters to get 
maybe a macro look, something like that. For bigger stuff or for maybe a little bit more abstract uh, scene, you can also use uh, wide angle lens. And the cool thing is with 3D, you can use whatever you want and it will work. So you can have a, a 35 millimeter macro lens to get a shot like this. That's pretty nice. And let's go back to something like that. And let's for now concentrate on this little hole here. And just hit render. So <laughs> that's way too bright here. And let's get the resolution here a little bit more. So full HD. And it's way too bright. So let's dial down the expers or the intensity multiplier. So something like 0, 1 will do the job. And now we've got a simple we've got a simple the background here and the object we've started with, but uh, they got the default redshift material. So let's get started with materials. Our camera is set up. Oh, not the camera. Let's go to sampling. Let's go to focus distance. Let's copy the parameter. Let's go to redshift camera. And under the DOF tab, it's the depth of field. Let's go to uh, enable the depth of field here and let's paste the relative uh, channel reference here to get the focus distance. And now when we restart the render, all is blurred out because the focus distance is somewhere in the background and we need to refocus it. So just go by redshift to here focus DOF and just click here or maybe here to get the focus here. And now the 90 millimeters uh, had way too strong shallow depth of field. So you will end up with something like this. So let's dial down the strength here of the bokeh effect. So something like this and let's replace the camera here a little bit. So let's refocus and now we can make some materials. So first of all we need to apply the materials. So let's dive inside here. And there are two methods or there are also other methods. So you can do something like this here. Matte object and it's applied. But I like to use just click here, open floating container, then navigate to your redshift and you can now select the materials and they will get applied. But I like to use just press shift and W and you will get this network tree here. And you can just drag and drop your materials um, from here to here on your material node. So now let's jump up or just select here the mat BG and let's also drag and drop the material onto the background. So let's go up with you and let's dive inside our materials here and let's first of all create a material for the background. So let's start up the render view again and let's place down RS material. Let's select the output and let's call it output, so RS output, something like that. And let's rewire it so the material goes to the RS output. So this is maybe an industrial scene or you want to make a little bit of product rendering and you want the cool metal background, something like that. The cool thing is with Redshift you can use presets here, so something like aluminium, gold, copper, platinum, and so on, silver. That's pretty cool, but 
I want to use a custom material. So let's do this. Let's get onto the material. Let's call it matte BG for the background. And let's go to the custom tab. So we don't need a diffuse, so let's go with that to black. And by the model, by the reflection model, we will use GGX. That's pretty good for metal. And we will use the color and edge tint method. So now let's apply a little bit of roughness, so 0 0.25, so the reflections are not so perfectly. So let's get even 0 0.35. So now you can with the Fresnel type, um, you can uh, go here to color and edge tint, and by the reflectivity, you can now change your reflectivity of the background. So, with something like that, that's maybe gold, so you can make your own little setup here. That's maybe it's something like copper. So you can choose whatever you want. So I will go with a pretty dark one. So something like that here. That looks pretty good for now. It's a little bit, you will get a little bit reflection. You can also dial, dial this maybe to zero if you want to get perfect reflections. Or another example, you can use a noise to drive the roughness. So let's get R as noise. First of all, let's plug the noise directly into the surface. So you can see the noise here. Let's get the frequency a little bit higher. So go to overall scale and bump that a little bit up. Let's make it a little bit more complex. And now let's rewire back the material to the surface output and let's get uh, the out color to the reflection roughness and you will get something like this. That's pretty cool too. What you also can do, you can get this um, to the reflectivity color. So ref reflectivity color and You can do something like this. So that looks pretty awful, but yeah, you can play around with that. So let's reset it. So for example, you can use it as the roughness for the reflections. You can also get a color range. Where is it? Color range, color change range. Plug that into here and you can play with the old range or new range. So you can get it something like here between 0 and 0 0.4 and you will get not so harsh roughness in here. So I think that looks pretty cool. Let's stick with that, but we also need a material on the object. So let's get an RS material here again. Let's call this mat out, material out, let's pipe it in red and let's call this material object. Let's connect it back to the surface and I want a really bright material here. So let's stick again with GGX. Let's go here. And now you can <laughs> do something like that. Pretty abstract. Oh, that looks that looks not bad. Yeah, you can use, when you use the full saturation of the color, you will get something like this. So you can play around with this. But uh, maybe you uh, will need to get uh, not so 
saturated color to get something like maybe this. So I will stick with full glossy. Yeah, let, let's get let's get something like this here. So that's that's a pretty good metal look. Let's get a little bit with the roughness, so zero point one to five. And object is uh, not always perfectly reflected, so just dial the white a little bit down. Also, in the color, uh, object is not perfectly in a diffuse color. So just dial it down a little bit, it helps sometimes. So now we will get something like this. The cool thing is, we can now blend between materials. So let me show you this. Let's duplicate the object, so let's just press ALT and drag and drop and you can duplicate your node. Let's go to tab and let's type in RS Material Blender. So this is, uh, I think most of render engines can use this. So you can layer your materials and blend them together with masks or noises, stuff like that. And that's pretty powerful. So let's connect this to the output. Nothing happens. Let's connect this to the base color. And let's connect this to the layer color one. So you will get this color here at the base color and this is your first layered color. So let's get this to something like that. Nothing happens because we need to blend it in. So for the blending let's use an RS noise for example. Let's just connect it to the surface. Let's make it a little bit harder. Let's make it a little bit more complex. And let's dial up the frequency a little bit. So now let's pipe that into the blend color and pipe that to the output. And you will get something like this. That looks pretty, pretty nice for now. So you will get the base color and the layer color is blended with the noise. So another example will be the curvature. The RS curvature nodes, uh, the curvature node is I think in all of the render engines. It's a pretty handy node. With the curvature node you can uh, determine the curvature of the object and make a mask out of it. So let's go to convex and let's dial the radius a little bit down. So 0 0.005. Let's go a little bit more. 0 0.0025 something like that and let's use the curvature as the blend color and you will get something like this so you will get your base material on the whole object but where the curvature is so harsh edges something like that you will get the second material layered on top of it so to make this a little bit more clearly, let's make a, another material and let's just make this red. And you can see it here. Pretty good. So you can play with the curvature. That's also cool. What you can do for imperfection, something like that, you can blend the curvature with a noise. So, for example, you got the curvature here. Let's remap that a little bit. So you can remap the curvature also. You can remap noises and so on and so on. So to get something like this here. Let's bump that a little bit up. Let's use the color range and let's use the composite. 
so the color composite node. Let's have a look on the noise first. Yeah, li let's make this way more, the frequency way higher, so something like 850. So it's pretty, pretty high. Let's get the, the curvature as the base color and the RS noise as the blend color. And now you can choose between different blend modes here. So maybe the, uh, the average you can add it on top. You can subtract it, what I want to do. So you will get something like this here. So now you can also make it, make the curvature a little bit more wider. So something like that. And now you can, you can connect this whole tree. So the material tree gets larger and larger. Connect this to the blend color. And you will get something like this. Let's connect the red again. So it's not so perfectly applied. It's a little bit noise introduced and so on. So you can use that for scratched edges, something like that. For example, you can make this copper. And let's go go up a little bit with the samples. And you will get something like this. So these e imperfections on the edges. So let's reorient this a little bit here. Let's jump out, jump out, and let's get another camera position. So for example, a product shot from the front view, like this one. Let's just go into the COC radius and let's dial it a little bit more down. Um, by 90 millimeters, most uh, camera lenses got an um, f-stop from, so macro lenses got an f-stop from maybe 2.8 good lenses. There are better out there with two, something like that. And with this uh, 2.8 f-stop, you will get a pretty, uh, pretty heavy COC radius, so pretty uh, small focus area, and this is something like maybe something like this. The cool thing is uh, we are in 3D and we can always adjust this. So get something like this. For example, so now you can say, nah, I want a little bit more distortion. So you can go for maybe 0 0.01. And you will get something like this. That's pretty cool. So let's make a whole product shot. And you can also see the roughness on the background here don't look so good. So it's pretty tiled and let's get rid of that. So the noise, let's make it way larger. So something like 2.5 or 3.5. I think that's a little bit better. Of course you can get ri rid of it and make your own static roughness so it's all the way through. So now we will get something like this. Let's get another angle here. And for example now let's don't use this 90 millimeters or 85 millimeters. Let's use a wide angle lens, so something like 35. And you can see you will get a whole different, a whole different appearance from the object. 
So let's hit just zero here and let's render that quick out. So you can see the difference. So you can use uh, custom custom shortcuts. So I did uh, go for zero on the render. So refresh is Q and so on. So let's just add the snapshots here and make a new snapshot. And let's again go back to the 90 millimeters. And let's get here uh, also a quick rendering. So you can save your snapshots down here and you can compare between maybe different light setups, materials, uh, camera angles and so on. So now we can compare these two. So you got here the wide angle and you will got here the 90 millimeters longer focal length and you can see by the 90 millimeters it's way more compressed than by the uh, 35 millimeters and you can play around with with the camera focal length so keep that in mind also always play around with with these uh, camera focal lengths so let's get let's get a manual light setup here. So let's disable the light here. Let's make it off. And for now, let's get a simple RS light here. Let's restart the render window, and you will get something like this. <laughs> so first of all, we need to move the light. So there are many ways out there to go for lighting setup, three point lighting setup, four point lighting setup, two point lighting setup, and so on and so on. So I will just make a lighting setup that works. So let's move that to here. And you can already see it's way overexposed. So let's dial the intensity a little bit more down to something like one and let's make let's make for example a long softbox so we will get the area here maybe to 0 0.85 and here to 5 so we will get this long softbox and voila we got a pretty cool look with only one light so now you can play with the rotation and so on and so on so this is our first light, pretty simple. Now we can introduce a second light to fill these shadows here. So let's turn this and let's move it. So we will see nothing because it's in the way of the camera. So just go under this tab and press uh, the visible button and it will become transparent so we can f see through the light with the camera. So now you can see, yeah, th that looks not bad, but I think in my opinion, let's, let's, let's get a little bit more down here. Something like, something like that. Let's readjust the focus here. And now you can see it, it's a little bit uh, too universal. So the light is uh, pretty good here and pretty good here. But let's just color this in and let's rename this. So we will stay organized. So let's use that here as a main, main light. And let's use that as a fill light. And 
I want to get a front a little bit more darker so let's just dial the intensity multiplier a little bit down so something like that but you can already see it will affect the the scene even if it's not so strong so we will just fill a little bit the shadows in what you also can do you can play around with image based lighting I did a tutorial on that so just look uh, around my channel another big thing is the color temperature so with the color temperature you will determine uh, the light temperature if it's warm or cold so this is now a little bit cold so you can see it's a little bit bluish what you also can do you can make this a little bit more warmer to something like that so industrial scene is mostly cold light something like that and you can for sure play with that so I think that's that's a pretty simple but good lighting setup here so you can now play with the lights play with uh, shadows and so on now what we can do to get it a little bit more maybe you want to draw the tension directly to this object and let's get a uh, let's get a rim light so let's close the redshift render view and let's call this rs rim let's make this red and let's get this light here onto the back and let's get it 0 0.5 so 5 uh, 3 and 0 0.1 0 0.5 something like that and now I just move that quick to the side and make this a little bit more something like that let's make it invisible and for where was it again all this rim light shader objects light enabled 4 and let's just draw this object in here so it's only enabled for object 1 and you can already see you will get this cool rim light here so to get it a little bit more extreme you can go with full red but I don't like to use uh, full saturated colors just multiply it a little bit up and you will get something like this so I think uh, that's enough for this lighting and rendering if you want more lighting and rendering so part 2 part 3 and so on and so on just write it down in the comments and I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next tutorial.